and welcome to the bird watching channel this program is about the fluctuating populations of american goldfinches and i am your host and fellow bird watcher sharon sorensen have you been checking your feeders lately and asking yourself wow i wonder what's happened to the goldfinches don't see any well, be assured that goldfinch populations, estimated at 42 million across North America, face no serious threat. And while goldfinches wander through much of the Midwest year-round, they aren't necessarily the same goldfinches. As you puzzle over the bright yellow bird's seeming summertime absence, here's the story. The fluctuation populations result when northern birds move through in the fall, feeding heavily before traveling on. That's when you see a real mix of plumages. Adult females, breeding males, some molting already into winter plumage, some youngsters. But many northern goldfinches find the Midwest southerly enough and stay. And they boost the winter populations, sometimes to absolutely amazing numbers. Depending on where you live, you may even see some pine siskins among those goldfinches here for the winter. They too have migrated south from their nesting regions near the Arctic. Spring brings another influx mobs emptying feeders on their way back north. Some of our winter residents then join them on that return journey north. The month of May can bring an interesting mix joining your goldfinches, including just arrived indigo buntings and lingering winter visiting pine siskins. The only time of the year you'll ever see that combination in your yard. Thus, as goldfinch numbers even out for the summer, depending on habitat and breeding territories, we now see the fewest goldfinches. Add to that the fact that goldfinches roam according to environmental conditions, affected by both the vegetation and the climate. They habitually don't nest in much of the southern one-third of the U.S., and climate change may be pushing them even farther north. So fewer may be staying in your neck of the woods. Since goldfinches don't show strong nest fidelity, they allow natural food supplies like native flower seed heads to direct their nesting locations. But there's more. Unlike other birds, goldfinches are vegetarians. They don't eat bugs, and they don't feed their babies bugs, like 96% of other songbirds. Early, before plants produce ripened seed, goldfinches forage on sap, on leaf and flower buds, and even the flowers themselves moisture-rich leaves, and, yes, fruit, all of which are abundant after spring rains. As a result, they may have little interest in feeder seed offerings. You know, they were likely harvested at least a year ago. Goldfinches nest late. Experienced females breed in July, gathering the first available thistle seed fluff for their nests. But first-time moms start tending nests in early August, so by then female goldfinches, busy at homemaking chores, become a rare sight at feeders. Thus, territorial behavior during breeding season affects bird populations at feeders too. Still, there's yet another possible cause of feeder population decline, and that's bad seed. 
Niger seed, sometimes called thistle seed, comes to us, believe it or not, primarily from Ethiopia. Its oil-rich nutrition makes it traditional winter favorite among goldfinches. But oil-rich also equates with easily spoiled. Any Niger seed stored above 80 degrees will turn rancid quickly. And rancid is hard to detect. Unlike buggy seed that has a webby appearance or even squirmy little bugs contaminating the seed, rancid shows no outward change in appearance. But birds won't eat it. And while maybe you've been diligent storing seed in climate-controlled conditions, it's possible it came to you from a warehouse without those conditions. Given summertime heat and humidity, we really don't know where or how or how long the seed has been stored, much less transported. So what to do? Buy a small amount of new seed from a vendor who sells seed by the truckload, guaranteeing rapid inventory turnover. Empty the old seed, wash the feeders, that's really important, and try the new seed. If the old seed has turned rancid, bird will find the new seed in a matter of days, less cueing you in uh, to what's wrong. In addition, however, some experts suggest that as goldfinches approach the breeding season, the birds prefer something more substantial than tiny Niger seed. In fact, I'm remembering how winter goldfinches flocked to black oil sunflower seed. In that vein, some folks recommend, as late summer nesting season begins, offering black oil sunflower seed, whole, chips, or hearts. And in my own yard, I'm now seeing that preference playing out. Meanwhile, however, offering moving water will always attract birds, all kinds of birds. Everything needs a drink. Then, when possible, plant native plants with good seed production. You'll be rewarded with goldfinches feeding on the seed heads. Then look to October when the flocks once again move through. So thank you for joining me to talk about the fluctuating populations of American goldfinches. I hope you've enjoyed the program. And if you want to learn more about bird watching, I have three books you might find of interest. Birds in the Yard Month by Month, How Birds Behave, and Planting Native to Attract Birds to Your Yard. All are available or can be ordered from your friendly bookseller or online from all the usual sources. You may want to take a look at my website, birdsintheyard.com, or join me on Facebook where I post something daily, or at least almost daily, about birds and bird habitat. Meanwhile, happy birding, and may you always have birds in your binoculars.